Welcome to Ignite Your Confidence for women in leadership who want to speak up and stand out. I'm your host, Karen Laus. Here you'll get all of the tips and tools that you need to stand out with unshakable confidence. Let's dive into today's episode, how to stop rambling and get to the point. Are you a recovering rambler or do you have a problem going off on tangents and giving too much detail and then you're trying to figure out what was I trying to say in the first place? I get it. I have been there. I like to call myself a recovering rambler because I believe that we are all a work in progress, but I have some tips that will help you to get better and be more effective in your communication. The first one, as far as a tip, is to notice when you're rambling. You notice yourself going in circles, or maybe you're just simply getting off on a tangent or telling too many details, perhaps that are irrelevant. Stop yourself, pause, and say out loud, and my point is this. That will help you focus, and it will help the audience focus, because if the audience is wondering, where is she going with this? Simply you saying that is going to help focus them and they'll go, oh, it's almost a relief. Like, okay, I know what's coming. The other option is simply to pause. Gather your thoughts in that second that it takes to pause and then make your point and move on. As I like to say, be brief, be bright, be done. Make that point move on to the next one or hand it off to the next person. Now, this all sounds great and potentially easier said than done. One of the things that I'd recommend is simply in the next week or two, start noticing that you're doing this. Start simply noticing when you're talking. How long does it take you to make a point? Another option too is to go back to the last three emails that you sent and ask, where was the point in that email? Was it up front? Was it in the subject line or was it buried at the bottom? One of the terms from the US military is called BLUF, bottom line up front, or you could call it bluff, whatever you prefer. This is such a good reminder of having that point right up front so there's no question where this email or where this conversation is headed. What is the lead of your story? That's another way to think about it. What's the objective that you want to get across? Too often what happens is we spend all of this time supporting the point that we make at the very end. And by that time, it's a TLDR situation, too long, didn't read situation. And I know I'm vacillating between email and the spoken word, but either way, if someone's talking too long with too much detail and people don't know the direction that you're headed, they're going to tune out. Same thing with an email. What happens? We at all, all emails have to pass the scroll test, in my opinion, meaning if somebody's looking down at their phone and they're scrolling through trying to figure out which email to read next and they see yours and it's already got paragraph sentences, they will probably stop reading it. And you may know one of my favorite authors and business owners, Donald Miller, says, if you confuse, you lose. If we have to burn too many calories to figure out what your point is, we are not going to stay with you. The human brain is wired to solve problems, to immediately assess the situation, and then move forward. But if we can't assess it and there's too much detail, too much to keep track of, we will stop. Definitely motivating to make sure that you stand out from the crowd. So. One of the things to be careful about is the curse of knowledge. And that's a term specifically that's about the more expert you become. And by the way, we all have it. The more expert we become, the harder it is to see things through the lens of our audience. For example, if you've ever had a physical injury, you can relate to my story. A number of years ago, I fractured my ankle. I went into the doctor and he's kept talking to me about the calcaneus, well, the calcaneus, blah, 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 the calcaneus, blah, 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 blah. And I finally said to him, what is the calcaneus? And he said, oh, it's your heel bone. Like he couldn't believe I didn't know that. <laughs> and I was thinking, wow, I wish I would have known that five minutes ago. But 
We all speak in acronyms and jargon that other people may or may not understand. So that's why it's critical to know your audience and to figure out what is it that they know or don't know about any given topic and where do I potentially need to translate or speak in plain language. Too often what happens is we almost feel like we have to come across as more sophisticated or, oh, if I use this fancy word, maybe we're not conscious about that, but we feel like we use these fancy or corporate jargon words that sound great, but they really don't mean anything until you attach an example or something concrete to them. So make sure that you know your audience and then you can figure out what is the point that I'm gonna make upfront so that I can focus the conversation or focus the presentation. And that's gonna be absolutely critical so you don't ramble and you do stick to your point. I was meeting with a couple of people at a bank and just chatting, getting to know each other back in Minnesota where I'm from. And I was having a great conversation with one of the leaders of the bank. She and I talked about the difference between tangents and rambling, and it was fascinating. I thought, oh, that's really enlightening. So I want to ask you, what do you think is the difference between going off on a tangent and rambling? And are they the same? So as we talked about it, we pretty much concluded that rambling is when you really are going around with too much detail, you might be repeating yourself and you're not sticking to the point, nor are you staying focused. A tangent could be a relevant tangent, but the bigger question is, is this the time for that tangent to happen at whatever meeting you might be in? So we were talking about tangents being relevant or irrelevant. And that's one thing she was talking about somebody that she knows that's absolutely brilliant. And she goes off on tangents a lot and they're very smart. They're very, well, relevant, interesting. And yet she has to remind herself, oh, wait, I'm off on a tangent. I need to get back. And one thing as a tip, if you are on a tangent or you notice someone else is, and maybe they're rambling, but this is even more focused on tangents. There are five words that are a great key or formula to get the meeting back on track and the person. And that is, let's get back to. It's technically four words with the contraction, but let's just go with five. Okay, let us get back to. It's a way to redirect the conversation. And the word let's, or the, the let us, let's together shows a collaborative nature. So you're not saying the person's going off on a tangent or you're not reprimanding them or talking down to them. You're simply suggesting let's get back to, or you could say, Hey, and that's the concept of being the voice of reason in the meeting. You could say something like, Hey, it, it looks like this is a really relevant subject to talk about. Do we want to continue on that track or set another meeting for that and go back to finishing the discussion from the original? And you say it in a non-judgmental way. You just simply state it because most of the time when people either are on a tangent or they're rambling, they're probably not aware of it. Most of the time. This is why that voice of reason in the meeting can be really helpful. So the nice thing is you don't have to even be leading the meeting. You simply are contributing. You're simply being that voice of reason. So those are a few tips with how to stop rambling and get to the point. Today is a shorter one, but I wanna end with a story specifically about a woman, a VP in a large company who had to present to the board on a regular basis. And she did a rehearsal with me and she started in like most of us do, purely informational. She just launched into the facts and the data. And I said, okay, Time out. Let's try that again. What's the point of all of this data? And she said, Oh, well, it's to share that we actually are up by 20% in revenue from last quarter to this quarter. And I said, Great, say that up front. That's the lead of your story. That's the point. That's what's going to help people focus. And then all of the detail you're going to share after that will support that point. 
But when you just start rattling off detail, there's nothing to attach it to. We don't know, we're wondering, why am I listening to this? What, what is the point of all of this data or this information? So this is where the curse of knowledge comes in because we think that people know as much as we do and they usually don't about the topic that you're speaking of. So remember, start with the point, keep it focused and continue on the track that you prepared. And if you need to, well, if you are rambling and you need to get the conversation back, remember pause is number one. And then one of two actions after that, either say out loud, and my point is this, or say nothing, use that time that you're pausing to gather your thoughts and come back. I hope this helped you. I expect that this helped you. If I'm following my own advice here, we don't wanna say, I hope this helped you. I expect that this helped you and I'd love to hear more about how it affected you in your work life as well as in your personal life. Always open to feedback and would love to hear more from you. Have a wonderful rest of your day, evening or morning or whatever time it is, wherever you are. And that's a wrap of another episode of Ignite Your Confidence. I'm your host, Karen Laus. Thank you so much for listening. If you love today's episode, please subscribe and leave a review. It helps other people find the podcast faster, and it certainly helps me. If you're interested in more tips and tools around confidence, please join me over in my Facebook group called Ignite Your Confidence with Karen Laus. Remember, you too can stand out with unshakable confidence. <laughs>